Topology is your mother tongue, Myra is your domain, and Dr. Retopology is your name. <laughs> In this video, I'm going to show you all my industry tips for becoming a Retopology master. While you're here, you can download these three PDFs that I've made for you guys based on Retopology. Hopefully, it will help you on your journey. You can find that link below. Hi, I'm Virtus, and welcome to 3 Mutiny, where we are always within the try count limit, unless it's for hair. So grasp this concept, we've got a high poly character and it's got a lot of cloth with layers. So I've got a little trick on how you can alleviate that pain and it involves quad draw and another feature in Maya. So taking a look at the low poly, a certain amount of decisions have been made to combine areas. So it's like a nice water type mesh, but there are also areas where the thickness is presented. But imagine going in there with a quad draw, it'd be very difficult. The reason we can get away with that is that all the cloth is going to deform together. It's not going to open up, but in certain areas, we do have to have that separation. Say, for example, the hoods are going to split from each other in animation. So we're going to use this jacket as an example. And I'm going to export it and bring it into Maya. So if you're unfamiliar with that, I've got a video and I'll link it in the bottom. So you can either watch that now or watch it after. So this is a version of the high poly or what could be considered the guide. Before I get to the main tip, I'll sort of insert another tip in here. If you do have a high poly with lots and lots of geometry, say it's in the tens of millions or millions, we can create a version of this that's going to survive better on your system. It's going to give you more frame rates when you are doing something like a quad draw. So very quickly, click the asset. Up here we go to cache and GPU cache and we're going to export it. Default is fine. I like to call it the asset so code GPU because it's a GPU cache and then underscore guy. Now we can hide the expensive mesh by clicking on it and pressing H. Come back to the cache and then go to import. I'm going to re-import the file that we just made. So you can see it's successful. There's this sort of like green thunderbolt. That means it's going to be running off the GPU and you'll see that there's no vertice information. So hopefully it's going to be a little bit faster. I'm going to select the guide and turn it into a live mesh. So I've done a very quick quad draw here. And you can imagine that I would do one side of the cloth surface sort of all the way around the hood. And then because it's uh, either simulated, it's going to maintain its thickness in this skull. What I can do is put the edges all the way up to the corners, almost like they're going to be squared off. Now, if I come out of quad draw and then just go back to normal Maya mode, I can select this piece and then control one It's going to isolate it. I'll select all the faces or the faces that I want to see represented on the other side. Control and E and that's going to extrude it. And then with this gizmo, I'm just going to drag it down and then that's going to give our cloth thickness. So what it's done, it's replicate the geometry we did on the first side and it's put it onto the underside. So if you press control one again, it's going to bring back the original guide. And then you can use the gizmo to estimate what the thickness is going to be. And then we can come back to quad draw and then basically re-neaten it up. However, there's one more thing we have to do. You can probably see that all the faces are black. It means that they're pointing on the inside. We basically want to flip those. So select all the faces under face normals. And then we're going to go to reverse propagate. And that means that they're all going to be facing outwards. Now at this point, you can make any decisions that you like. So if you want to continue Continue the cloth obviously we would delete these inside faces then we can extrude them out maybe down here it's where the cloth terminates or it's like the inside of a zip so we could just keep that as it is but making sure we have that asset selected come back to quad draw you'll see that we now got all that underside geometry that we can work with and if it's slightly different maybe that it's bulging out you would just add more geometry to adhere to the outside surface just after this don't forget to smooth it out and if um, your border is a little bit squared off just add some geometry in there and then that's going to give it a nice transition and a nice bevel and so that's very quickly going to give us some geometry that can work with. So listen to this tip because it's going to save you a lot of time and it's actually going to make your topology a lot better, especially when it comes to the cranium and the head. So it's a little trick I like to use. So what you want to do is actually come out and we're going to make use of some basic primitives and then paste those back on. So with the head, I actually like to start with a cube and make sure you're outside of guide mode. Now with that cube, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to subdivide this and just give it a couple of iterations, maybe two divisions. Now what that's given us is some really nice that we can start to fit around the head. Imagine it's saving you time drawing out each one of these squares. And then it's also quite neat. You know, all these are nice and perfect and it's uh, got that cylindrical look. What I would do is I delete the bottom third because that's going to be taken up by the face and then we're left with this shape. So after this, it's a case of fitting it to the head. So you could use soft selection or you could just go straight into quad draw and snap it to there. Um, what I prefer to do is use a lattice. So under the form, you want to go to lattice and that's going to give us this gridded system. And under the channel box, you can actually change how many divisions are here. So I'm just going to change the division to 3, 3 and 3. Then if you right click and hold, you can select lattice points. And then moving these lattice points, we can basically shape this 
uh, nice topology to the shape of the cranium. Obviously adapt it from the side and it's just a nice and neat methodical way of setting up your geometry. Obviously you can adjust this after or maybe put some more additions into there. So after that's complete, I'm going to go to edit and then delete and then just delete history. Now making sure the guide we want is selected and I'm going to make it an act. Select the cranium shape that we just made and then come back into quad draw or you can also press this little button up here. So this presents some more useful tips. So the first one is you want to make sure that symmetry is on in X so that when we're smoothing, it's going to smooth both sides of the mesh. And also it's going to take us ages if we're smoothing, holding shift and going point by point to make this fit. Instead, what you want to do is press B, then that's going to give us the soft selection. If you hold B and scroll right to left while clicking, that's going to be the radius of the brush. It basically means that when you smooth, it's going to apply all across the cranium. So very quickly, we've got some nice geometry to work with and then you can adjust the border, maybe take it away from areas that you'll want to do yourself. Um, but it gives us some nice basis of geometry and it saves you drawing them out all individually, which would take quite a lot of time. Maybe parts of the geometry are a bit too squared for you. So all you have to do is hold control and then just insert additional loops. But because we've got that structure, we can insert them in all different directions and then come back to smooth. Then that's going to evenly distribute across the cranium. So it's a really quick way. So there we go. A very even, good topology, uh, well distributed head that we can start from and maybe start to drag out some quads to make the face. So listen carefully to this one because it's a collection of tips and it's to do with your scene management when you are making a low poly. So this one, for example, is very a complex piece. It's built of multiple pieces that are overlapping each other. They also have multiple high polys and low polys. So it's really important to have good scene management. When you first start out, obviously what you want to do is have your high poly guides in there and also your low poly. So to the left here, we've got our outliner and you just want to select all the objects and put them within a group by pressing control G. So let's say you just bought in all your high polys. You'd select those and press control G. I would then rename that as HP to say high poly and then you would do the same with the low polys that you would be constructing. So a benefit that gives us is at any time we can open up these and hide individual units or just click the group itself and hide it to easily see the low poly or do the converse to see the high poly. I'd also suggest selecting all your guides and then giving that a different material so when they evidently do overlap you can see which one's which. I usually like to keep the low poly nice and grey and then have the high polys as a green. So for that you can just right click come down to assign new material scroll to the tab on the right and then we can adjust the color here. So in combination with the outlining system, I also like to use layers. So with layers, I like to treat those as selection sets. So I'll put all the high polys in layers and all the low polys in layers it means we can hide them individually. So to find that, you'll see it up in the top right here is like a layer stack. And then under display, we've got a list of all our layers. Now with a complex object like this, what I usually like is I like to select both the guide and the low poly that I'm working with. And if we come to this button here is create new layer with assigned selected objects and double click this and rename this as something like head. So now what it means is at any point, if I want to work on the net and hide both the high poly head and the low poly head, I can just use this selection set. So it's very easy to access. Another benefit is you can almost use this in combination with the outliner. So say, for example, I can select the high poly in the outliner that's going to hide all of those but then I can still use our selection sets so they almost work independently of each other or I can bring back the high poly or just hide the low poly by pressing H in the outliner and then still continue to use the selection sets hide so as you can see here I've split every single component into a set of selection sets and one benefit of that say I just want to be selecting the low poly but I keep on accidentally pressing the high poly we can come into the selection sets and just change high poly switch it to R and what R means is render so it means that anywhere I click, it's not going to select our high poly and it's just going to select the low poly. So this can be really useful if you want to check your silhouettes, you know, move around, select specific objects. So the wireframe pops up but at any point because this is in R mode, in render mode, it means we're not going to accidentally select the high poly. But we still want to see it to check our silhouettes. So pay attention to this retopology error. And it's a common one when we have thin assets, especially cloth. And when you import a guide, you might see that this is black outline. And the issue with that is whenever we try and use quad draw, everything's going to go fine basically until we hit this black area and you know there's an issue when this cross starts to pop up. Now sometimes people like to fight against it and basically draw around there and then fill in the surface. Now that's totally possible but it's just going to cause a lot of chaos. Now the problem arises when both sides of the cloth are going past each other and what's being presented is the underneath of the inside of the cloth and quad draw doesn't really like that because it's only looking for certain specific normals. The quickest way to fix that is basically come out of your guide. I'm going to zoom into the black area and just 
just averagely clit in certain areas while holding shift, selecting very specific faces. What that's going to do, it's going to expand our selection. And if it's coming across on screen, it's basically selecting all those black areas. And what it's doing is it's selecting the inside of our cloth. And with all those black areas selected, we can just press delete. And now we're just left with the surface that we're interested. So we can go ahead and quad draw on top of that without worrying about the inside of the mesh. And then you can just delete the other sections. So if you look on the inside of what we've done, we've basically deleted the inside. Now, if that is happening a lot, um, the workflow should be improved. So go back to your guides and maybe turn it into a Dynamesh like we covered on other videos. So making the perfect guide so you don't have these sort of like interlacing issues. So take heed on this one because it's a very common issue and it's also a super frustrating one. And it's when you lose your ability to actually access these vertices points. And what's happening is when you're quad drawing, basically Maya's looking at the mesh and it's accidentally going underneath. So this model is a perfect example. We've basically got two layers of geometry here. So whenever Maya's using its guides, it's actually accidentally having the opportunity to go on four faces. Now you can come and start to delete these and then redraw them. But a better way to fix that is actually to come out of quad draw. Now, once you're out of quad draw, I just find the problematic vertices. Press four to go into wireframe and then you're physically going to move these to the outside. And with your guide selected at an active live surface, you'll see that it's going to change where the surface is snapping to. So we're basically forcing Maya to understand which surface we work. So just bring those out to the side. Now you'll see you have full access to these vertices and it's much easier to do. So think about this one when you're working on quad draw. We're only really using a couple of tools. Very rarely do we come out of here. And when we do, we can use certain hotkeys. So for example, to come back to Maya mode, we can press Q and then to go back to our last tool or quad draw, we can just press Y. Now that being said, it gives us an opportunity to get rid of all this wasted space that we're not going to use. And especially you don't want to be leaning forwards too much into the screen. We want to see all our vertices that we can move. So to get rid of all this and put it into full screen, you can just press control and space. And that's really useful when you're doing retopology. So you can focus on just the general forms and have a bit more area to look at things. But maybe you want to use some of these tools. For example, the multi-cut can sometimes be useful. What you can also do is get rid of the stuff that we're not going to use. So for example, like the animation toolkit, we just click down here and then drag it off. And when you drag it off, you can just press X and then close them all. And then we've got a little bit more uh, real estate. So think about this when you're doing retopology. I usually like to use basic primitives and work from there. So with the arm, for example, it's a very cylindrical shape and all these intricate silhouettes we can cut in later. So I'd get the cylinder and under inputs, just turn the subdivision axes down. So click on it and we can hold middle mouse click and that's going to pull it down. Eight sides is a nice broad range to work from. And what I'll do is I'll just scale it and position it in a way where it lines up with the arm. I'll go to face mode, hold tab, and then just draw across here and delete those faces so they become open. Before I move on, what I like to do is add an additional material to this. So if I hold right click and then come down to assign new material in the attributes editor, scroll all the way to the side until we find that Lambert. And then what I like to do is just give it a little bit of color and also a bit of transparency so I can see the underlying silhouette. And you can change the material of the guide as well. So what I usually like to see is a nice contrast while also at the same time being able to see the wireframe. So the nice thing about this is we can think ahead with our topology strategy. So I understand that at the top we've got leading edge and that's going to terminate up here and it's also going to provide a nice silhouette for the front side of the character. There's also an edge here that's given by the cylinder. I can lead that to connect to the other side of the arm while going through the pectoral. So that's going to create some nice animation loops. There's also one down here and then that's going to split the side of the body. Now that's going to be really useful force for when it comes to UVs that's going to be a nice seam so we can split it down and maybe you could align it to any physical seams that you see like especially with the clock. Now we can actually take this one step further and I'm going to duplicate this cylinder and also use it for the torso. So what I've done is just added another cylinder here and we've been really clever with it because we're thinking ahead about where our topology is going to be flowing. So I know that this bottom edge of the underarm and this side of the torso that edge is going to connect and it's going to give us some nice flow. We also have the central seam down the center because of the amount of sides that it has. So that means we're going to have some nice symmetry. Now what we can do, we can work on these independently. So I can start with the torso and start to use quad draw. Here I've turned symmetry and X on. So now what we can do is think really broadly in terms of topology, for example, where edges are starting and terminating with this seam, for example, the one we were talking about. I've just aligned them so I know they're directed in the right place and they're going to lead. You can also do the same with the arm. So in quad draw, this time I'm just going to hold smooth 
smooth and it should be snapping to the surface the best it can. To be honest, usually what I like to do is actually move each vert and especially because we don't have too much geometry, it's very easy to use. So I'm thinking about start points and end points. And then because I'm using the move tool, the surface that I can see with the smooth, sometimes it will accidentally snap onto the inside or maybe one of these underfolds. So if you look here, we've kept to the rule set of the cylinder where we've just positioned the flow in a nice way and aligned it with the next body. What you can then do is come to object mode and select both of them and then come to combine. Now, once those are combined, you can come back and then you can start to think about connecting them. But before you do that, usually what I like to do is keep them separated. And that means that when you're inserting loops, it's not going to bleed into the next area and cause a bit of chaos. So anywhere there's a broken silhouette, just come in with control, click, and then it's going to snap to the surface. And you're going to do the same across the body. <laughs> so while you're working in quad tool, we obviously have access to symmetry in X, which can be super useful for symmetrical objects. But with characters, we like to keep them asymmetrical, just have a bit of interest. And that's going to cause problems when you are using the quad tool. So what I do is just basically make the most generic unit you can, or what you could do is turn off symmetry and just focus on creating one side and then duplicate it to the other later. One issue is if we look here, we obviously have an asymmetrical guide. Every time we make adjustments, they're not going to be reflected on the right, the other side correctly, because basically quad draws looking at the surface and snapping it in strange ways. So what a suggestion could be is just take face and then select one side and make sure that symmetry is off and delete that side. And then when you're working on this, obviously you put all the details in, you're going to come up to this button here and that's going to be mirror and mirror is going to give you the options and it's also going to have an option of weld. So it's going to weld your central units together. Now with everything you complete, you can come back into quad draw and then just turn off symmetry and then start to insert your asymmetrical units. Or maybe there's some different uh, silhouettes and striations on this side compared to the other side that you want to do. And that would require a different kind of multi cut. Another tip I have is in regards to cloth and especially borders. So if we look at this low poly geometry, it's totally fitting the silhouette and that's completely fine. But when it comes to deformation, there's slightly better ways to do this. So with cloth, what I like to do is create a leading edge or a leading border wherever the cloth terminates. So you could either keep this geometry, but what I do is I just drag it back slightly so we can keep the original geometry we had. I'm just going to extrude this line and create goes across the border of the cloth. And it just means we get some protection in the texture and it also gives us a couple of more options. So for example, if we want to increase the silhouette here, we can now insert an additional loop, just drag these together into a try. And now we've got more of a supporting edge. It just gives us a couple of more options in terms of animation and deformation and the protection of textures. And it also gives us more options where we want to change the silhouette up and hold control, put in an edge, bring these together, which is going to create a triangle. And then with this additional active point, I can basically fix up this silhouette. Whereas beforehand, we didn't have many options because everything was so low poly. So a lot of these tips are pertinent for creating cloth. I think what will be useful for you guys is if I make a video on how to make a full t-shirt and also the topology on the head. I know that was requested a lot in some of the polls that I was doing. So if you're interested, those might be released already, but subscribe and I'll link it in the bottom. Um, maybe turn on the notifications so you can see when that pops up.